Wagwan, Wagwan, what's great? Sheffield John Morris again, man. And today, I'm about to present to you one of my most favorite things to make in this entire world. You saw the title, so you know exactly what you're about to get. I'm going to be showing you how to make Jamaican fried dumplings. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, stick around. After the intro, we get rolling. We know about sardines, yeah. yeah. chicken neck, yeah. chicken back. Yeah. Okay, so now this fried dumpling video is similar to the one that I have out that has been made since 2017. So two years in the making, we have that first video out. The issue that I have with that video is you're not seeing me. Second thing, most important thing apart from not seeing me, a lot of persons were saying it has great content, but internationally not everyone was able to understand the dialect that i was using i was just using strictly patois in that one most of the time so now i said okay i'm going to give you a new video with the similar techniques and recipes that i normally use but i'm going to ensure that i speak standard english so that everybody worldwide can understand i'm going to give you step-by-step -step process on how foolproof this can be for you to get perfect fried dumplings looking nice and fluffy on the inside crunchy on the outside and guarantee you you love it to kick start with the ingredients i have two cups of all-purpose flour do not use any other flour all-purpose flour we have a teaspoon of salt over here we have one two tablespoons of baking powder we have a tablespoon and a half of granulated sugar cane sugar is not acceptable we only use the granulated sugar and we have two tablespoons of butter. And that's it, five simple ingredients, but it's the techniques that gonna guarantee you that beautiful fried dumpling all the time. You wanna ensure that you have a dough hook when you're using your mixer, right? And we're just gonna set up the dough hook. And in that now, we're gonna go directly with our flour. Get our sugar in, baking powder, salt and then our butter so what i like to do is once i get all those ingredients in going into your clean hands i like to just get the, the butter in like breadcrumb consistency before i start the kneading and also to incorporate all the other ingredients that i have another ingredient that was not mentioned is the water exactly five ounces of water and we're gonna go all at once right I'm going to put this on number two there about just so that the dough can take its time to formulate. You don't want to put it on a high speed and then it get floured going all over the place. So start out at number two and slowly mix it in. And you're going to want to get yourself a spatula just so you can help to push that flour into the center to form that dough. So as soon as you see some of that flour incorporated, you're going to turn now your speed up to number four or five there about. And we're just gonna push that down. Okay, so this is what it should look like after it has been mixed, right? Don't worry if your dough is a little bit sticky. That's what you want, right? Nothing too hard. You see this dough is nice and sticky. That's what we want. So you can have this to proof up for a minimum of two to three hours or overnight is best. So I went ahead and I made a batch from last night and I left it out on my counter. A lot of persons asked me in the previous video how they should store the dough. Just cover it properly with a fling, cling, cling wrap. Just ensure that there's no air that's going into this to get it dry, right? And you should be fine. If you take it directly from the fridge, and try to fry it, that will cause your dough to get burned. Because when you're taking that cold stuff from the fridge to put it in a hot liquid, it's just gonna make the outside crisp and the inside raw. So always leave it out on your counter. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this from my bowl, because this is the batch that was made last night. And as you can see, it's very sticky, just the way I want it, right? Put that old batch in, we're just gonna cover that up, and that can be for breakfast tomorrow. You see me? Even better. Okay, so what we're gonna do, you have a clean surface. We're gonna dust that with a little bit of flour, nothing too much. 
and we're gonna put our flour, our dough. So put your dough down on that floured surface. Dust a little bit of flour on your dough. And at this time, you wanna put some oil on. I'm gonna be using about a quart of oil. You can use less if you don't have enough, but I'm using one quart, because I like to fry my dumpling in deep fry. I like to deep fry my dumpling to get them nice and spongy. And reason being too, I don't like to see my dumpling with different shades of colors when I use shallow frying. So I like to put it, but if you have a little bit of oil, it can still be done in the same way, right? To get that dumpling shaping perfectly, this is a complaint that I see some people say, listen, the dumpling came out perfect, but I just need to work on the shape. I'm gonna show you how you get the shape right. First, you have to roll that dough. Just roll it out long, you know? Out like this. And this is where you're starting to form that perfect ball. Another person may just break a piece of the dough. Don't do that. You won't get that perfect ball that you're looking for, right? So you roll that out until we get that nice and long like that, right? You're just gonna get a knife and we're gonna divide this now into equal portions. So that into half. You can get about 10 dumplings from this depending on the size we're looking for. So one, two, three, all right. So I'm gonna get eight dumplings from this because of the size that I'm gonna go with. So get yourself a tray that you're gonna put the dough on and we're gonna dust that lightly with a little bit of flour. Now, to make the dough nice and round, you can do it one of two ways. On, the, on a surface or in your palm. I'm gonna show you in the palm firstly. So we get the dough, get a little bit of flour in your palm, rub it up like this, grab your dough, so your fingers are fold, your thumb in, so you have like a ball. You bring that now, have the dough in one hand, flattened like that, stretch your palm out like that. Bring the dough under to grip it like that. Put that there, but leave enough space at the top. So now when you have the ball in, if you realize, the dough is right there. So it's snuggled up. So that way when you roll it now, it's just gonna bounce off the walls of your finger and your palm to create that nice, beautiful ball. So go ahead, flat, tuck it under, thumbs in, thumb in, sorry, and we're just gonna roll. So while you're rolling, you're gonna press now your weight on there. Just press the weight from this hand on there and keep the fingers in place. So press on there, keep it in place. And that's so, and then you just roll. So that's how you're just gonna get that ball to formulate. And as soon as I let go of this, you're gonna realize that perfect ball that we have under here. So you see how perfect that ball looks? That's a result of it bouncing off the fingers. Now it's very important to add the exact amount of water that I told you about in order to get this nice and proper. Because if you make the dough too dry and you're gonna add all this flour, you're just gonna have chaos. So the softer the dough, the better you add flour and you get that perfect ball. Now, just gonna dust that. Dust that with some flour. Just like that and then we bring it onto our tray. And there, we have one perfect dough ball, right? Now for the method on a flat surface without your palm, right? In fact, I'm gonna show you three ways. So this surface that I'm using, it's very smooth, so the dough is gonna be all over the place. I'm just gonna get a little bit of water onto my fingers, splash that on there, and that way now, it will kinda let the dough stick and not move around. So we get the dough, same procedure with the fingers, fold the fingers, put the, put the thumb in at the pointing finger like that, bend the top of your fingers like that to have that ball shape in the middle of your thing, hand, right? Bring it under the dough, press it down and roll. And ensuring that when you're doing this, you're not moving your fingers at any given point. You're keeping them in place, putting pressure on top of the dough while rolling. And that way you're gonna feel that ball becoming nice and round in the center of your palm. Soon as I let go of this, you're gonna see that perfect ball. Ready? Boom. Right? 
Again, get some flour dust on there. And we put that right here. So that's two ways how you can get it done. Another way, where I see my mom making fried dumpling growing up, flour your hands again, get the dough. So you get the outside in, and you bring everything from the outside in the center to get it nice and smooth on the outside. But this is not my favorite way. Get a bit of flour on my hand. This is not my favorite way of making my dumpling, but it can still work, right? A lot of persons make it like this, and then you can go ahead and just round it up like that. But you won't get no perfect ball that I'm looking for. And that's another way how you can get it done, right? So, show you again. These are the three ways. This is the traditional way. This is, this is my mother's way. Some people get it done on the traditional way, but I go with the non-traditional way to get them nice and perfect, right? So the dough is already rolled out and everything, right? Now it's time for the oil. One of two ways that you can test this oil, you can use a thermometer. We need to bring this up to temp to 280 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Just gonna test that out. Another way how you can test this, get a small piece of that dough, drop it in the oil. If it floats to the top too quickly, when I say too quickly, within the first 20 to 30 seconds, that means it's too hot. We can reduce this heat by adding some fresh oil into this, right? So I'm at the perfect temperature that I want it, and we're just gonna go ahead and add our dough. Reason why you want to keep that at 280 degrees Fahrenheit, because when the oil is too hot, the outside of the dough is just going to crisp up, causing it to be harder to penetrate that heat in the dough, and then you're gonna have a raw inside and a tough outside. So when it's low, when the heat is low, the inside cooks first, you get that oil to seep into the dough, then it cooks from the inside out. Then you gradually increase that heat to crisp up the outside. So watch as I go. Now, a lot of persons may be alarmed by putting in the dough into oil so low in temperature because they're concerned if it's just going to be soggy. It will not be soggy. 280. And then after about a minute, then we increase that to 300. Then after that, 315, right? And we just watch the heat as we go. Just gonna press with my thumb right in the top right there and hold it like that. Drop right into my oil, right? Go right in. And you see I have small bubbles. That's what you want. Eight of them right in. You realize they haven't flowed to the top as yet? That's perfect, my people. Don't be alarmed. These will not be soggy. And I repeat, they will not. You saw, you saw the thumbnail, right? So now we're gonna increase that heat now. Because it's been a minute since they're in there. We're gonna increase that heat. I'll bring it up to 300. And you're gonna realize how everything is just gonna slowly flow to the top. So you see that now? Look at that. You're slowly floating to the top and the dough is still of that white color. That's what you want. It cannot be a minute in and you're having your dough looking brown. At 300 degrees right now, frying those. Right, what is happening right now is all the oil is slowly penetrating the dough from within. Increase that heat now so that we can get the outside to crisp up and to get rid of that um, oil from the center of the dough. All right, so you see that now they're nice and crisping up. Just slightly roll those over, right? Because you want to get that even color on everything. We cannot fit any more dough balls into this pot. But at the same time, we still have enough room for it to move around, right? So if we had a smaller pot, what that would do? Would squish the dough, and then you wouldn't get that perfect ball. And a big pot will make the dough burn because you have too much space for the oil to heat up too rapidly, right? So those are coming out nicely as I want them to perfect balls. You know what I say? We just rotate those every so often. And how, how do you tell when these are ready? As I said, if you're frying it in the in deep frying oil like I'm doing right now, seven to eight minutes and you're golden. However, if you cannot tell if it's ready without breaking into them, once you lift those dough up, 
they should be light. So once you know are a bit light, then you know. If you lift it up and it feels a bit heavy, chances are the center is still raw. Right? I hope that I'm not coming at you with too much information here. If so, just re-watch the video. But I have to bring all these pointers to give you the perfect dumping. Because these are the questions that I was asked previously and I decided to make a second video so you can have everything in there, right? Perfect timing. Now you're going to bring up your heat to 350 degrees Fahrenheit just so we can get the outside nice and golden. And once it gets nice and golden, then they're ready to go. Alright now, I'm going to break into one and show you what it looks like. Perfect, as promised. It is not oily inside my people. It is nice, perfectly cooked. Nice and hot, see that? Beautiful. So there you have it. How to make your very own fried dumpling at home. Here on more time cooking it. If you enjoyed this video, Please remember to give it a thumbs up to suggest to others out there who are looking to make their fried dumpling just like this. You know me I say? Once again, you know my people, no flow for the love. You know the thing go, oh, I know I'm, a few of you may be over here because you were over on my vlogging channel while I was cutting my hair for this show. Thank you for being there. And check out my vlogging channel, Morris Time TV. Subscribe to the chain. Check out the other video. And see how big, how well we did with this one and the one before, you see me? Thank you very much for watching again. So go enjoy some dumpling and being honest. This is the first thing I've had since today, you see me? So that's it right there. Jamaican fried dumpling and more style cooking it. Tell a friend for tell a friend. Subscribe and share. No flow for love. Today we hit 1 million subscribers. One sub million subscribers. We hit 1 million views on our Jamaican beef party. So check that one out as well. You see me? Until next time, see if you have a panic, go on, big up on yourself.